Let me begin. Hi, everyone. We now the we start the presentation of Patrick Bücher, Bücher of success, about introducing Python as a main language in a company or in a university. So let's shut up our cell phones and enjoy. Thank you, everyone. It's, it's very cool that I'm here. I was surprised how many people are interested in this subject because it's more of a business subject than a technical subject. Let us have a quick look at our agenda. So first of all, I will explain you why I think that I should give this talk. So what is my motivation? Why I think this is interesting? And very quickly, I promise you this is not a commercial thing, one slide about our company so that you know who we are. Um, then the motivation, then the question, why do we need a new programming language inside our company? And why should this language be Python? And then, how did we implement Python at Success? What did we do to ensure that Python becomes one of our main or core languages we use to develop? Of course, this, this introduction had some problems, so I will shortly list you the pitfalls. Maybe it is interesting for you if you have a si similar project. And then, I think also very interesting, Python and the business. Because I think we all know the technical advantages of Python. Um, it is a bit different when you try to sell it. There are some hurdles you need to overcome, some things, some prejudices and so on. Things you have to know, or maybe we found out, and I think it's interesting for other people as well. And last but not least, was it worth doing this step? Since I'm standing here, yes, it was worth. Uh, but still, why was it worth? Yeah. So. Out of interest, um, how many of you here in this room are involved in any kind of management decision? It can be for a small company or inside a bigger company. Just to see. So I thought so. Um, yeah, so I hope it's interesting for you. And of course for the others as well. So the motivation. What you see here is a very famous um, slide, a very famous triangle. You see it in every management book. Um, it is this famous triangle quality, cost, and time, and you cannot uh, ma easily manipulate all of them in the same time. So usually if you don't pay and you have no time, your quality will be low. Okay? Very well, very famous thing. Um, looks trivial, but it's true. And this is the main challenge for all IT projects in a commercial environment. Yeah? Because your customer usually comes to you when he has no time left because he spent a lot of time thinking that he should do something and then he wants to have it in no time, in the best quality, at the lowest possible costs. Because interestingly enough, from my experience, when you sell software projects, it is not like selling a car. If someone wants to buy a car, he exactly knows that if he goes to the next Hyundai branch, he will not get the same quality as going to the BMW branch. With software, People expect to get the quality that they are used to from Google or who, uh, in another big company, but they don't want to pay. So that's the, always the challenge. It's really like this. So the challenge becomes even more complicated when you have many projects. So what you need to successfully lead, successfully guide a company through the time, a company like Success who makes software, you need According to my experience, you need a right process for your projects. And the process should be a little bit flexible, but it should still give some guidelines. It should not be 100% Scrum, just because Scrum is very fancy. It's third, certainly also not 100% a waterfall model, just something which gives you a guideline. And then you need the right mix of projects and customers. That's something which is very, very important. Because if you have 10 customers, all of them technically complex and business critical, you will have a problem because your company will be under a constant stress. And your, your key people, they will burn out very easily. So the right mix of projects and customers, this is a, real, a, a good task, an important task. Then you need the right team, the right team for the task. There's no point in having um, a, a team consisting of 10 of the best Python developers available in the world. Because they, each of them is a very experienced person. Each person will have a very diff, uh, clear vision of how to do things. So you always need a mix, the right team. Some senior people, some medium level normal people, and some junior people. Okay? And then you need the right technology. 
last but not least. And maybe it's Python, not always, I will come to that. Last but not least, very important, you also need luck. It's true, it's true. Um, I find it very interesting because you look at all those success stories, you see how Google grew, grew um, how uh, Facebook became big, and, on, and so on. And, but everybody forgets that at a certain time there was, for example, there were other, other platforms competing, and these people making those platforms, they were not stupid. So that's all I know. How did this happen? How to un... Uh, one moment. So that was bad luck. <laughs> And I did not plan this. Okay, um, you still hear me back there? Yep. Good. Okay, so you need luck. Well, of course, I cannot tell you how to enforce luck. There are many techniques to do that, but maybe it's not in, in, in the scope of this. So I can tell you, from our experience at Success, about the process, the people, and the technology. And for today, I will, feed, I, I will focus on one point. How, mainly how, to, how we implemented Python at Success. Well, that's what, what you will hear. And I believe that this is interesting for other people as well, because it gives you some, you hear from someone else who did it, maybe you can take something home to, to use. So very quickly, as I said, Success, we are making individual software development and consulting in this area. We are about 60 people. We are a little bit special. We are, um, the, our headquarters is near Bubicon, near Zurich, but we have teams in Minsk, Belarusia, in Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. So we have, of course, like any, every, every company, uh, some a kind of a, let's say, a vision. And we say our vision is the trust. That's really important. We try to make the things our customer want. And we believe that we should have a certain competence when doing that. And by the way, that, that, that doesn't mean always using the, bleeding, the last bleeding edge technology. It means knowing the right tool for the task. And we are sustainable, that's very important. We are self-financed and we believe in this because self-financed, uh, if, you, if you're self-financed, you are able to weather storms. Okay, that's all about my company. So we come to the question which lies at the core of this presentation. Um, and the question is, okay, why did we need a new programming language? Uh, in order to explain this, I need to maybe reach out a little bit into the area of sales. So, like all small companies, bigger companies have it as well, but small companies have it a lot, you need to have a so-called sales funnel. So, basically, you need to have a very broad intake, and then at the end, something should come out, yeah? So as an individual software development company, the broad intake means that you just go onto the market and you tell the people that you can do everything. They want SAP, no problem, we are the SAP experts. They want JavaScript, yes, we invent the JavaScript basically. Um, all those things, so that, that's, the, that's, that's the problem. Yeah? So as a sales guy, you will do that. As the technical guy, of course, this is a horror because a lot of the projects will be new for you. In a lot of projects, you will have technical risks, which you don't have if you already have experience in your area. Okay? So we grew with this model. It's a normal model. It's standard. And by end, around 10, 000, uh, 2010, 2011, we really had a problem. And I had, to, I had uh, several discussions with my business partner, me being the technician, he is being the sales guy, because we had projects in Delphi, Java, C, C++, C Sharp, PHP, and of course, JavaScript and HTML. Also, I didn't mention here, there, is one, there was one Python project which was developed and maintained by myself. Um, so we had this problem. For example, in the Python area, there was the problem that there was no backup for me. Also, it was a weather derivative pricing engine, so it's not an easy business. So you need to, to find someone who understands it. So we had this problem that we were very broad. Then we decided that the mobile world is important so we started to make iOS projects and also Android projects. The projects varied in size from several mandates, really very, very small mobile projects to very big main years project. One of the projects, for example, is running since 2005 with a team of six developers constantly working on it, making it bigger. <coughs> 
So at that time, it got really uncomfortably hot, especially for me because, and also for my colleagues who are senior developers, because at the lo a lot of things at the end landed on our desks and we had to resolve them quickly. So really, there was, there was a time when some of our senior developers, he was programming on the same time in Java, in Delphi, and maybe also had some support case in C. So we had a problem. So we decided we need to reduce our portfolio of technologies. But still, we need to have a relatively broad funnel. Still offer people from the Windows area, from Linux, from Macintosh, and where, from, from the banks where they have big centralized systems, um, basically our services. That was the motivation. So also from, a, from, from the economic point of view, there was ASP.NET, so basically web, the web stack of Microsoft. And PHP, they were fixed because there we already we still have. And we had at that time big customers paying on a monthly basis a lot of money. So we could not just kick out those technologies. So those two technologies were fixed. And then was the question, how, what language can replace all the re re remaining languages? Of course, it's not possible. But we said we will not make any new projects in, in the other languages. We will say we either offer this technology, this technology, so ASP.NET, PHP, or the number three. And then what, what, what language do you need? You need something which is platform independent. It's clear, yeah? Uh, you need a language which is mature and has a big community. It's very important that the language is mature because there are so many new technologies on the market, you never know what will stay more than one or two years. So you need something which has proven, its, let's say, its value. And you need a big community, of course, to, to get support and also to find the developers who are interested in either carrying on their work in this community or starting to learn it. And last but not least, the learning curve. Because remember, we are a small company. We cannot invest one or two years, train a team without getting money for it. So then, it was the big question. Of course, to, as I say, 1997, learning curve maybe not, but platform independency, um, it, it, uh, stability and so on, it would have been maybe Java. But today, it's Python, in my opinion. Also, I had experience in Python, was also, but, it's, but it's also not... Let's say it's very important. So I knew that you can learn Python quickly. I learned it in 2008 relatively quickly. And already in 2009, I went to EuroPython and talked about my project in Birmingham. So I said, we need Python. My, my business partner agreed. So we said, OK, Python. The reason is clear. It is really simple. We all know that. It is versatile. It's platform agnostic. You can use it for, the, for, for web applications as a, as, a, as a programming language on your server. You can use it to generate JavaScript, if you like, and you can use it on also on client-server applications on the client. And last but not least, we like the philosophy behind Python. We believe in this way. So we said, OK, we are going to, to take Python, and we are making Python our third programming language, our main programming language, actually. Which leads to the question, okay, how do we do it? It was a very nice, um, we usually take uh, our decisions on a Friday, just before the, the weekend, then the decision is very quickly taken. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it's true, it has other reasons, but it's true. <laughs> so usually we take a day off on Friday, we go somewhere nice and we have lunch together and we discuss the, the let's say, the strategy of the company. So we took this decision and we said, okay, Python, now it was my task to find out how to do it. And especially, how do you cope with the risks? Yeah. Because, yeah, we decided it. I knew the language. My business partner is coming. Really, he, he used to be a developer in the 80s, and he used to code in Visual Basic. So he, for him, Python it was just a language, and, and, and now he's selling things. So how to mitigate those risks? Um, the basic, the basis of our decision was the following four principles. And you also find them in, in management books. Um, this is just the things which we found out during our work. If you take some decision in general, you should take it quickly and also implement it quickly. Basically, interestingly enough, often you don't get more by pondering about yes or no a lot. Yeah? Then also very important, people learn only with real challenges. I hear I wrote better, but now I tell you it's only. Normal people learn only with real challenges. 
And then very important, you should always avoid as a small company, as an entrepreneur, to, to make research. Research is not innovation. Yeah? Innovation is put something new, I, that's my definition, is some innovation is doing something new in your company, maybe providing a new product to the market, but it's not research. So the idea was not to make a, a scientific comparison between, I don't know, Python, C Sharp and Java and then find out what is better. Um, so it was really the idea, introduce Python in this company. And number three and four are very well connected. Uh, you cannot afford as a small company to spend a lot of money in finding out what would be the right way. You should have your activities financed somehow. As I said, we are self-financed. We have no money from the bank. So it means everything we spend is from our budget. So it's very simple. We just said, okay, the next project which is suitable, we take and we use it, we, we, may, we do it with pipe. You need to hedge your bet still. You cannot just take any project. So we said, okay, first of all, it should not be critical. Critical in, the, critical in the means that the size is very big or the customer is critical for us that we should not lose it, uh, the customer if the project does not go well. Okay? So no, don't, don't, do not take a critical project. The sec this is clear. The second point is, in my opinion, less clear. The project should not be too small. Because what people don't know often is that small projects are for some reasons often more risky. Usually because you have less time to find out what you're actually doing. Already, if, if you only have three weeks, you should really make every step correct. If you have one man here, you can take your time, set up things properly, study the business logic and so on. Yeah? So you need a project which should not be too small. I said at least one man here. The reason was simply we wanted to make it with three or four developers in three to four months. Okay. So, what, but still the project should not, com not contain any complicated technical challenges. So, for example, the thing I mentioned, with, with what we tried it, the weather derivative price engine, I did not do it this alone. I had a very experienced Python developer, a former mathematician, who made the business logic at the beginning and helped me a lot. So, there were technical risks and I could just, let's say, sit beside him while he was driving the project and I could learn the language. If you do this alone, it would be a problem because you would have technical challenges in a language you don't know. Also, what people often confuse, you should also not have a complicated business logic. Because the business logic sometimes can be trans transformed into a very simple technical solution, but you need to understand it first. So also don't take a complicated business logic. And last but not least, don't do it, as we say in German, on the open heart. Don't choose a risky domain. If you are working in hospitals and you provide vital systems for the patients, maybe it is not a good idea, although people do it, to use a new technology for it just because it's interesting. And this is a real case. I saw it once in a, in a, in a project. Okay? And then you should use easy tools with a, with a, with a, with a let's say, a good learning curve. So in our example, it was Web2Py, a web framework based on Python, which I personally like a lot. Okay? And then, last but not least, you should not give this task to your most senior developer just because he's the most senior developer. You should take a specific team with people who are interested to, to learn something new. I don't know, from marketing theory, there is this idea that there are people who resist to change, People who are normal, like, yeah, maybe it's nice, maybe not. And people who are the first movers, they like it. So if there's a new iPhone, they will run to the shop and buy it, yeah? So you should have in your team people from the, the second and the third category. Not everybody should be a first, a, a first mover because they will throw overboard everything, take no consideration of the risks. You should have some first mover and you should have someone who is a little bit more critical but still open. You should not take someone who is against the project. Because it, it sounds simple, but it's, it's maybe not so simple to implement. Maybe it's an important person in your team, but you should explain this person that at the end, the only thing the person will do, it, she will or he, uh, he will prove that it's not possible to use this language. Yeah. So you should take a, a positive-minded team. And last but not least, this also turned out to be important. You should still give the project manager a goal and the goal, in, my, in, in our opinion, we always said we want to have a project with profit because we are doing a business 
And if you want to have a new language, and if Python is as good as I claim it is, then it should be possible also with a new project, given a fair customer and so on, that you can earn money with it. It also ensures that the people are doing the right things. So that's how we did it. And it worked that way. Of course, we had some troubles. So in my opinion, it was surprisingly smooth how it worked. It, 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 it worked. But some problem we had, and, and one of the most important problems is when you move from one programming language to the other. It's also very simple, but important to remember. <coughs> For example, Python is not Java. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, but the point, yeah, it's, it's, the spice is maybe even especially not Java. Um, the, but the point is people start using Python, and of course they use the right syntax, otherwise it would not run, but they program in a way like, like they are used from Java. So they maybe, I call it, they blow up the things a little bit. It's a bit too big, yeah? And, and they don't have, but it's important. Java is like this, but there are also the tools for Java. So in Python you don't have them, so you, use, you, you, you have to ensure that they really have the time to learn how you do things the Pythonic way. So you should take care to make code review. Now, in a university environment and in a big company environment, especially in, a, in the scientifically or technically oriented big companies, code review is totally normal, I believe. <laughs> but in a small company, not only in our company, in general in smaller companies, Code review is often a, a, a thing you don't do because you have no time for it. You, the, the customer does not pay for it, so you just write the software, it's running, maybe you have a unit test and then you, you deploy and it's fine. Um, if you're doing something new, please make the code review because you will be, uh, ha there will be big problems otherwise, for sure. So take the time to have a look at the code. Also, don't do it like I did because I looked at the code after two and a half months. Yeah. It was very, st I had no time simply, I knew it was stupid, but I did. And, and I can really tell you it is stupid, don't do it. Look at the code after the first sprint, maybe two weeks. Maybe even after, after the first, uh, first week, it, it's your decision, but don't look at it too late, because three people can write a lot of lines of code in two months. <laughs> We were, by the way, then very lucky because the guy who, let's say, committed the biggest crimes, he's a very, actually quite experienced developer and very well, very committed to the company. So he spent several weekends to, to, to refactor his code. And he was, he was a Vietnamese guy, so for him it was a question of honor. It was very good for us, but you cannot, <laughs> no, it's true, yeah, they have, a, they have really, the, the, the mindset in Vietnam, in my opinion, is very good. They really want to make quality. So for him it was embarrassing, and so he corrected it. But you cannot rely on that, so... <laughs> Look at it early. Then allow the people to refactor. That's why make the project big enough that they can refactor because they will learn during, during their work and they will know after one month they will know that what they did on the first day was not good. So allow them to refactor. Give them the time in the planning. Also explain it to your customer. That's very important. Maybe that, that's also something. Maybe you should tell your customer if you use a new tool. I mean this is a business decision but Maybe it's good if you have a good relationship with your customer and you make him a good price, maybe he is willing to take this adventure with you. Enforce the refactoring is the next thing. Sometimes um, they think it's perfect or they don't want to spend the time. Do not only allow it, ask them to refactor. And also very important and not so easy for me personally, you have to be patient. It comes also with the point seven, you should not interfere. Especially you have experience in Python and you love it and you know how to do it. And then you give it to, to give a task to someone else and this guy, this person, he or she, doesn't matter, will have no experience in Python and will do it differently. Now you can take the code and correct it, everything. And then you can say, this is how you do, how you do it. And the next time you will do the same. And, and again the same. So be patient, do not interfere. Let them do their work. That's a general advice, but it's especially here very important. In the middle of your project, one of your developers will tell you, look, I need five days with Python for this because it's very complex. If I use JavaScript or PHP, whatever he used before, it would take me one day or five hours. And then you say no, simply. Because it's, it's really important that you, be, you are strict. Don't, you have a plan and you, you, you try to mitigate your risks before so you can really be strict and say, no, we don't do it. 
we use Python and we learn how to do it in Python, then I'm sure the next time it will not be five days. Okay? And last but not least, it, it's also connected with the point one. Python is very agile. Ensure that people are using this. Very simple. The debug cycle, um, it, it's always amazing for me. Because you can basically take your software, go to your, to, to your customer, make, if you are in agile model, make the sprint review. And if he sees a bug or if he wants something changed, you don't, you don't need to recompile everything and find all libraries. You can, you can change practically in your development environment and run again and, and the customer will see the change. So explain the team that they should use those things. It's, if it's good engineering or not, you can discuss because you will may, may, maybe not think a lot before doing it. But for the customer, it's very, very nice. He sees, ah, I want it green and the guy was able to change it to green in several minutes. Yeah? So use this because this is a real difference to other languages. Okay, so that's the problems we had, the things I recommend you to do. So, when we come to the next point, I wanted to explain. <coughs> so how is, how I saw that Python is per, um, perceived or is Python is seen in a business environment. Um, again, remember the sales funnel, as you see on the left side, a, a, a very many, um, hot words, uh, technologies and so on, and things coming to that funnel and at the end you get something out and sometimes you are forced to use a specific technology. Now, the problem is that just changing from 10 different programming languages to, to only three, and one of them is Python, will not change this fact. So if your customer has an SAP installation, he wants to have an SAP interface and you need to write it, it doesn't matter in what language, and maybe he says all our interfaces to SAP are written in Java, our developers know Java, you will make this interface with Java. You should not argue then, it's just a fact and it's needed. So that's very important to remember. So the question is then how you find out or what factors exist that, um, let's say, drive the decision for the technology. Again, you can find this in a lot of books. This is from the practical experience. Um, there are two types of decisions, or let's say two types of drivers behind such decisions. One of the things, I call them the reasonable drivers, whereas the other are the personal drivers, maybe sometimes unreasonable. The reasonable driver, the, the one of the most important is for sure surrounding systems. So here's the example. You have a, a JMS-based message bus. Yes, you can connect with Java, uh, with Python or any other language, but the customer, if, if the customer uses JMS, mostly he will use Java, so don't try to push Python too much. Then. Other thing is basic systems. For example, the company has Oracle. So it's better also for you to sell the project if you also suggest Oracle as a database of your choice for this project. Although you may think that it's too expensive and MySQL is better, and, or was better until it was bought by Oracle, and now it's Postgres <laughs> SQL, yes. So, so, yeah, you know what I mean. Don't enforce this. And, and very important, the poor guys at the IT departments of bigger companies are usually proficient only on one platform. They know Microsoft and SQL Server, they know Oracle, whatever. They know those things, they know IBM, Lotus, Domino, and they want to use those tools. So try to help them by making the interface and so on. And with this is also important, sometimes there are contracts in place. Sometimes a company is part of a larger chain, of a logistics chain, for example. And those contracts, they enforce certain standards. You, you should know them before you suggest Python. Because all those things, they result in the point five, high investments to change the basis. And these high investments, maybe they, you will not get the project because you make the, the wrong proposal. Then, as I said, the, the, the things before I considered reasonable um, um, drivers to, for a technical decision, they are also unreasonable. They not, must not be unreasonable, but they are more personal. Most important, I don't know how many people have experience with the IT departments of big companies. You know how it is. It takes very long and they are very reluctant uh, to... You shall not have root. 
Yes, exactly. But you sure. don't get any right. Yeah. But if you're a CTO, you might have uh, some power over this. Uh, yes, I, but I'm, I'm the CTO of a small company trying to sell something to a bigger one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my, let's say, uh, my standing there is where... Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, the IT departments of your customers usually remember how they are. I mean, they, are, so they will get the phone calls if something is not working. People often forget that. So, so that's why they say, okay, I know how this is working, so why not use that? So make the sysadmin your friend. It's very important. Don't alienate him by, by um, let's say, uh, showing him that you think that he's lazy or whatever. Make him your friend. It's very important. Then also management here saying, a lot of things happen, apparently, I, I, I can only explain, explain like this, because someone on the golf course hears from some colleague that, for example, SharePoint is the solution for every management problem they have. And then they come to the, to the IT department and say, we want to have SharePoint. Yeah? Or now it is more, we need an iPad. All our processes must be enabled on the iPad. Now, in theory, it's a good idea. Um, but you should then use the opportunity and take the business and not ask it, what do you want to do? Find the business case for this idea, basically. And then internal politics. I saw that a lot. People tend to, someone who was very important said that XYZ is the best architecture. Maybe this guy left the company or he's still somewhere else controlling his decision. And, and, and this influences the, the, the outcome of, of offers and so on. So it can very much be that they make, uh, uh, they ask you for a proposal, and then you should try to find out what exactly you should propose. Yeah. Otherwise, you will fall, you, you will just uh, say no, wrong technology. Okay. And also, last but not least, uh, religion. We all know that Python is the best possible programming language. <laughs> it's very important. It's true. Please. But there are poor souls who believe that C sharp is better. Whatever. Yeah. And and you will not. You you need to find the way to convince them that for this project maybe Python is better than C Sharp or Java or whatever they have. And you should not explain them why Python is better. Because they will explain you why C Sharp is better. Okay. So now I told you why no one ever will use Python. And, but there is of course the possibility that you indeed find some customers who are willing to listen to your proposal, to what you suggest. So what do you tell the people that they will use later Python? Um, the first thing is clear platform independence. That's a killer, but it's not as, no, it's not the biggest killer. For me, it's really the development cycle. Um, we as a software company with a team in, in, in Belarus and in Vietnam, we have a problem with the speed. Because we need more management and we need more, more also control to ensure that, I mean, it's very hard for someone um, sitting on a desk 6,000 kilometers away from his, from his customer to find out what the customer really wants. So we have the problem that our development cycle is not as fast as it should be. And I found out that with Python, you can mitigate this. Now, if you have all your team on premise, even at the customers, in the customer's office, with this advantage, you can even get even faster. So that really, the main, in my opinion, the main argument to sell Python is the, dev, the fast development cycle. And I mean the whole development cycle, including the maintenance and, and, and also including the, the fact of quality. You are making very fast, very good software. I think that's the nice thing. And it runs everywhere. Point three is also relatively important. People ask because they read about Java and, and being bought by Oracle, my, my, MySQL being bought by Oracle. So it's completely open source. There is no company with a little, more or less good reputation controlling the direction. Yeah? It is mature. It is not a risk that, some, that tomorrow no one will stop, no one will work with Python. And there's a big, big community. Okay. But still, as I said before, Remember who is paying your, the, the, the bill. So do not force your choice of technology. That's maybe the, the thing. If you, if you can, suggest Python. If not, think about if you want to make the offer or not. But do not force it. You will not be happy afterwards. In a, I say very simply, in a pure um, Microsoft environment where everything is done around IIS and SQL Server and Exchange, and the, the customer has a lot of developers already um, 
experience with this technology, maybe it's better if you, if you have in your company the, the competences, you see sharp. Unless he really asks for Python, do not enforce it. So, when you suggest Python, the customers will ask questions. They will want to know things. So what, 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 we, what I heard the most is for sure the vendor lock-in. Because really for the people in a the business, they know about .NET and they know about Java. They know about .NET, they know about Java, and everything else is for them a niche. It's, it doesn't matter who, what big company is using uh, Python or whatever other language. For them, Java and .NET, that's clear. So you must take them the, the fear of being locked to your company. The second point, the fear of open source. Because it's really true, it, it's understandable as well from a business point of view. You are standing there really naked if your dead open source project uh, yeah, is dead. Sorry. So tell, use components which are stable. Use components where you can guarantee that they live on for a, for a long time. Don't just take the next new open source project. Wait a little bit and take, some, take something which is, has proven itself in the market. And then, as I said again, help the sysadmins. They will not take the decision, but they can break your project, voluntarily or not. They can break it, uh, help them, and they, they will also influence the, 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 their, their managers, because the managers at the end also need some advice. And they will ask the technical guys, maybe the ones who later will run the whole infrastructure. So help them, take them the fear. And, and remember, it's very hard. Now, if you need to start, I don't know, programming in R tomorrow, maybe it would, hard for, it would be hard for you as well. So there are people working several years with the same tools. They're happy, they know it, so help them. And then, um, this is also from a book. I think it's the first you learn about system architecture. The, te the problems are usually not technical. So the technical decision, you can explain the customer, is less, is important but it's more important to understand what technology you should, you should use what for the technology. Sorry. It's more important to know what, the, what your problem is from the business point of view and then take the decision about the technical way. Okay? Good, so we're already very close to the end. Uh, yes, it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was really good. I can tell you that, that um, the project was a web application with also with a mobile, with an interface in JSON, um, which will be used by mobile clients. Um, we could implement it very fast. It is an idea in a kind of a special form of um, directory for where, where you can find information about um, communities in Switzerland, about uh, municipalities and so on. Um, it's not yet live, but that has to do with the business because the business partner now needs to find his investors. He first wanted to have the application in place to find the people investing in it. So it's running. We use Web2Pi for basically everything on the back end. And we, we also wrote uh, an iPhone app and an Android app, but that a different project. So after this, um, we really said, okay, Python is really well worth uh, the, the effort. At the moment, we have four different projects with Python. All of them involving uh, Web2Pi. So our decision was now, really, the strategic decision we took after this, we will make all individual web projects with Python, with basically with Web2Pi. If we can influence, influence the decision, we will use this tool. Also, for other things like desktop applications, I don't know, um, things on the server side, we, we will always suggest using Python. So I, I, I can say it, it was very, very well worth it and also very nice to see that it works like this. Um, that concludes my speech. We have some time left. During your presentation, you said that um, you shouldn't start a project with Python that has complicated business logic. I don't see what business logic has to do with uh, this kind of decision. It, it's a good point if, if you are on premise. Um, from our experience, our structure of company having project management and maybe the lead developer in Switzerland and having a team in Belarus and in Vietnam. 
um, the understanding of the business logic gets even more crucial. And it, mean, and, it, and it means you can lose a lot of time until people understand really what your business is, from cultural differences and so on. So, so we always look at the business logic and the technical complexity, yeah, and, and we decide if it's complex or not. So that's more specific to your business, <coughs> you know, how, you, how you convey your setup? Maybe, yes. That's why it's in especially important in, in our company. I believe it's of general interest because really if, if the business logic gets very complicated and um, then it's maybe not good to also learn parallel and new technology. So just to have only one problem, which is the business logic. But in our setup, it gets very problematic. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had a question about mobile at some point. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you had uh, you mentioned that you were doing mobile stuff at the, at the very end with the yeah. funnel. Yeah. And uh, Python is not really well suited for mobile. Though I, I heard about a couple of projects, and I wanted to ask if you. Uh, ever consider them, um, especially on Android, because I don't know about iOS, but there was a project called PySide, I think, that would allow you to create an inside Android app only using Python and kind of compiling it with PySide to generate an Android app. So I don't know if that was ever something you considered. Uh, mm, I looked at it and uh, only to prove my business partner that you could py use Python everywhere. But we never... Um, we, we, never, we never really uh, made any project on the mobile with Python. Okay. It's a general problem with mobile projects that a lot of things have to, have to be done platform specific, although there is phone gap in those things. Yeah. And also the API change a lot. But it would be nice. Really. <laughs> Thank you for the talk. Have you ever tried the let's build a prototype in Python sales pitch to the C Sharp and Java guys? We just do a, just, a t uh, just a prototype, and if we prove it works, we can do uh, implement it in the real no. language. No, to be honest, no. It's a very good idea because together with the, the uh, one of the bigger Swiss telecom companies, we have something similar regarding prototypes in place, but only for mobile front ends. Just make a front end. So it would be a very good idea. Yeah? Never came to the idea. Um. Great talk. Uh, just a question about the financial effect of choosing Python. Uh, do you consider you will earn more money? Or do you think you will be cheaper for your customers? Um, in the end, uh, if, you, if you look at the project, so those are the first project you do, but can you already have a trend saying that uh, uh, basically you're, you're getting faster with Python than on other languages, so it will be less uh, in general days, so you're going to get either more money or be cheaper for your customers? Do you already have this kind of effect in, in your company? I can, or maybe you can guess. It, it's coming. I don't know. I can guess quite well because we, we, we measure our um, let's say costs on a, on a daily basis and, and monthly we, we basically close our our um, financial uh, our books our lectures so we know we try to know from every project relatively actually exactly what it costs us and also including the maintenance what I can tell you is that that at the beginning of course it was not faster but now it's getting faster I'm involved in a relatively big project with a medical company and there the pipe part is Python biggest part from our side and there's also a Java part and the guys using Python are extremely faster and this is also amazing and financially very good for us and um, so I can say yes but the most the most important point for me is maintenance gets less of a problem we have less technical problems interestingly enough yeah but that's part of the cost also. yeah exactly so I would say yes it makes sense financially but maybe what, just one thing here. It also had to do with the decision. It could, maybe it could have been another programming language. It was just a decision to have only three de programming languages and not ten, mm. yes. which increases your experience in all three of them, and then you have less problems, and then you think it must be Python. But that's a part of the decision. Yeah. Yeah. So um, thanks for the great talk. And you briefly mentioned that you work with banks, mm -hmm. and I'm in the financial business too. Mm -hmm. And Professional support. I know there's like lots of Python consulting going around, but they really like going to Oracle or like going to Google and saying, "Hey, we need that. Isn't that feature? Or we got this and that problem?" They know they can throw money at it, and um, it gets big. It gets big. It gets big. And 
Python being open source is more like a chaotic process of like getting stuff in, and arguing could get shutdowns and stuff. So uh, do you have anything like arguments that uh, to argue against that point? No, it's very hard. Mm. It is. It's really very hard. Yeah, I, I can tell you. Question. I think the problem is that. Oh. Okay. Just a bit of okay, I talk a little bit louder. Uh, it's very hard to argue against that. Um, <laughs> it's working. Yeah. So it's very hard to argue against that. The the problem. So I can tell you in in the financial area, our customers are usually using Java. We have, as I said, we have this weather derivative pricing engine. That's a, a, a quite a big customer, quite an interesting business. That's written in Python, but it was a startup. At a certain point. So they decided. Um, for the banks. I could not give you the advice, uh, honestly speaking. I think you just maybe need to mention to them that several really, really critical um, bugs in Java were not fixed over months, yeah? Um, and so that the argument of being here, let's say, protected by some big vendor is not really true because it's not clear what the target of this vendor is. But I cannot give you the silver bullet. <laughs> I would like to know. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Another question? The microphone now seems working. Uh, f first of all, just to comment, the, the gentleman here, uh, the, this is a really good article that addresses that question of, by, by Clay Shirky, I believe, and it's called uh, Love Internet Style. It basically talks about how uh, open source uh, uh, is, is actually lasts longer than uh, a lot of the, when people ask for you know, a, an authoritative source that they can get support from. It's, it's really good stuff. It's good, uh, love internet stuff. You Google it, you can find it. Um, my question, thanks for the great talk. Uh, th my question is, have you ever uh, said no to clients and because of uh, you, you recommended using Python or a better way of doing things and, and they said no? And I mean, do you, do you accept all the clients you guys get or do you guys say no a lot? And it depends on the cycle you're in. I mean, uh, basically, at the beginning, we never ever rejected any clients, and we learned that this is not very wise, but you do it because you need the money. Um, now we are a little bit bigger, and yes, we decline sometimes clients. Because, mostly not because they take the wrong decision in technology, but because that we see that it's impossible to make the project successful. And let's say the technology decision is that just I one part. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, we decline clients because we think they are not, let's say, able to make the project. I even heard that big consulting companies assess their customers before they really make an offer to them to find out if they are, if it's a, let's say, how to say, a dead walk to make the project. Okay. So was Python 3 a part of your decision and what are the risks uh, that you saw with Python 3 for your business? To be honest, yeah. <laughs> okay, better, yeah, sorry. Okay, mm, I have to be open and honest here. At the moment we use Python 2.7 um, simply because Web2Py is still on version 2 and the previous projects I made are also still on Python 2. So. I know that we should look at Python 3 in the future, but I cannot tell you anything about it. Um, so you also outsourced to Vietnam. Um, did you uh, go there to also teach them uh, Python, and uh, how did you develop that? Um, yes, we outsourced to Vietnam. The company belongs to us, so it's a, a dot, let's say, a branch of us. Um, we, as I said, we teach them by the project and by code review. So they get the, the task, they do it, we review the, re, re, review the code, and give advice. We don't believe in, we, in uh, let's say, education days without a practical purpose. So you should have a project, and then you find out how you do it. Uh, hello? Ah, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying again. Okay. So thank you much for your talk. I'm I'm working in a quite big company which is using Python, and I just wanted to add that really the speed and uh, quality of the of the pro you generate uh, inside because we are providing services for our own company and we do it in Python, and even the Java.net, uh, Oracle guys, Informatica guys, all the guys are saying, "Wow, 
you can do it so fast. So it's aligned with, with your experience. It's really nice. I'm Thank really happy because Python is getting to the corporate environment, and this is really cool. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't say it last time. So great talk. Thank you. Uh, and j just a testimony. Uh, we have been working in a small startup for like nine months now. And at first, uh, we are two, uh, three developers, and the two other developers are PHP guys. And at first, when I tried to say, hey, Python could be a good idea, uh, they basically considered it for like three seconds, laughed, and went for a coffee. <laughs> And uh, I felt like I could do more to, Im to improve the Python uh, visibility, the Python, the way pi the people see Python in this uh, PHP world. And after a couple of days uh, where we tried to do like machine learning and uh, this kind of stuff, they basically realized that Python has NumPy, has SciPy, has Ascalar and SK image and stuff. So maybe a good idea to, to point that Python is a good idea, uh, is it, it could be a good uh, technology to use is to point out all the great, great projects we have that some, some uh, programming language like I think PHP uh, don't have. Um, and I'm thinking about NumPy, I'm thinking about like a SciPy, I'm thinking about requests. This only library like HTTP requests, we, we can do so much better than uh, other programming languages. So maybe advocating Python by the example, uh, showing code snippets where how can you do a HTTP re request in PHP? 25 lines, we can do that in one line, mm -hmm. etc. cetera. Like maybe showing examples like that could improve the, uh, the, the way people see Python, I don't know. Yeah, it's exactly what we do with Web2Py, because Web2Py, we also use requests in there. Web2Py is very, very fast set up and configured and, and everything, and usually amazes people. Um, what other technologies did you consider? For example, did you consider you no know, Scala or anything like that? And uh, what made you decide against them? We considered the the, the, the languages which were already on our stack on our stack, and um, Python was it was not mentioned because I only was the only one using it. So no, we did not. We, just what was on the stack like Delphi, no no brainer. Yeah, Java really a consideration worth C++ and C basically. And be the reason was that we did not want to take a technology which nobody knows. And I also wanted to use Python. <laughs> <laughs> Any other question? Did you ever run into any technical blocker technical difficulties using Python opposed, opposed to other languages? Because I can make you an example. Uh, I work in a um, research institute which work mainly in genomic stuff, uh, and we also have a spin-off commercial company. We tried really hard. Oh, I am this is admin. Root. <laughs> Beware. <laughs> we tried really hard to push. Uh, yes, probably the only one in the conference, I think. <laughs> Everyone's always blaming this admin. We tried really hard to push Python as a, the main language for most of the stuff, or at least to try to replace all the um, Perl scripting uh, and the bash scripting stuff we had. But in fact, we hit, after we convinced some people, we started to use it, and then we hit the technical difficulty, because the um, read line is terribly slow compared to Perl, in example. Did you ever find any similar issue in, in your experience? Or, uh, any suggestion how to overcome this in some way and push the language further in the usage? Mm, no, at the moment we are lucky. We, we could solve all the, I mean, there are always the obstacles, but we could solve them. Um, if there are re really very, very specific problems, uh, especially related to speed, I mean, the, the general suggestion is to, to use a, a C function for it and bind it to Python, for example. Mm -hmm. But I would say if it's really extremely big, the difference, it, it, I think it's, it, someone should review the code. Maybe the wrong library was used or the wrong type of parsing. I cannot say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, we were lucky. We, we had no, really, um, no dead ends, let's say. OK, thank you. 
OK, the time is over. But uh, in five minutes or so, we'll start the next talk uh, about Mongo Persist. Thank you for watching.